Loon Chase by Jean Helprin Deal, illustrated by Katherine Freeman. A boy and his mother take their dog on a peaceful canoe ride. They find themselves frantically racing to save a mother loon and her family. Early one summer morning, before breakfast, Mom and I paddled to Big Island to pick blueberries. Our dog, Miles, leaped off the deck to swim with us. His nose puffed just above the water. Miles loved to swim. He could dog paddle faster than I could paddle a canoe. I made a triangle with my arms in the neck of my wooden paddle, dipped the paddle into the lake and pulled, just like mom had taught me. Can I go to the island by myself soon? I asked. Mom just smiled. I could tell that it wouldn't be long until she said yes. At the end of the lake, by the mill, a loon and two loon chicks were swimming. Loons were rare birds and seeing them was as exciting as watching a shooting star. There were so few left in the world and it was against the law to hurt one. I was glad that they were far away though. Miles was a bird dog. He wasn't mean, but he just had to chase every bird he saw. His nose sprayed silvery drops. Luckily, Miles was too busy swimming to see the loons. At Big Island, I stood in the canoe picking berries while mom held the boat steady. Now we were busy, so we didn't notice when Miles stopped sniffing around in the bushes and swam away. Sound carries a long way over water. Before we saw Miles again, we heard The sun bounced so brightly off the lake that we had to squint to see him. Out in the middle, his black head pointed straight toward three tiny specks, the loons. I tossed the berries I had in my hand into the bucket. We jabbed our paddles onto the rocks to push off. We just had to stop him. Miles was our family pet. He played ball, slept on a dog bed, and ate out of a bowl. But when he saw a bird, something came over him. He had never been this close to catching one in our yard. These loons were on the water though, and two of them were babies. Mom canoed faster than ever. I started to paddle, but I got so scared Miles would catch a loon chick that I froze up and quit. While the boat raced along, I held my paddle on my lap like a useless stick. A dragonfly flew up and hovered over the blade. I need your help if we're going to head him off, Mom said. So I pushed at the dark water again. It felt as thick as chocolate icing. We paddled hard and managed to catch up with our dog. The three loons were still far off, swimming slowly. So I guess they hadn't seen him yet. The other parent loon was nowhere in sight. It might be away gathering food somewhere, Mom said. She turned the canoe so it crossed Miles' path, but he swam around the boat. She tried prodding him with her paddle to point him in a different direction. He ducked and came up near me at the bow. I reached out to grab his collar and missed. Miles, I yelled. He swam off. Get my paddle, Mom shouted behind me. In the confusion, it had slipped from her hands. I pushed and pushed with my paddle and somehow yanked the canoe close enough for Mom to reach in and grab hers. By the time we turned the boat back around toward the looms, Miles had almost reached them. And they had seen him. The big loon flapped its wings on the water. I expected it to cry out, but it didn't. The babies made tiny, quick zigzags this way and that. Fly, why don't you fly, I shouted. Fly, fly, fly. But the chicks were too young. 
There was no way to tell if the big loon was the mother or father. Grown-up loons look alike. But that didn't matter. Whichever it was, that loon parent wouldn't leave its chicks. Dive, I yelled. But the baby loons were too young to dive deep enough or long enough to escape. Now Miles would reach them before we could ever catch up. We were just too far away. I made myself not cry. We had lost the chase. Then something amazing happened. The big loon rose up in the water. It flapped its wings and splashed its webbed feet as though it were walking on the lake. Below, down in the water, the dog's head looked very small. The bird spread its huge wings between Miles and the babies. Its feet began to dance faster and faster. Water flashed up in the sun and foamed white like a fountain in the middle of the lake. Whoosh! Miles lunged at the loon. The water splashed up even higher. What was happening? Wait! Miles was turning back. He was swimming toward our canoe. That loon looked delicate and beautiful, but on the water it was fiercer than our dog. The loon was swimming too, in the opposite direction, as if the dog were still chasing it. We couldn't even see the chicks. When Miles passed us, we could see that there was nothing in his mouth except bubbles. We followed him. He climbed out of the lake, shook off, and lay panting on the dock. <sighs> Mom clipped the leash back onto his collar. I want to go out by myself and make sure the chicks are okay, I said. She looked at me carefully. All right, she said. She would watch me and hold Miles. I stared back to Big Island, alone in the canoe for the first time. I wasn't scared, just disappointed not to find the loons on the other side of the island or in the cove. From the dock, Mom waved and pointed to where we had picked blueberries. There they were, two big loons now, and yes, the two chicks between them. I stopped paddling and let the canoe float. One of the parents dropped its head forward under the water and dove without a sound or a ripple. A few inches from the canoe, it came up again. I heard nothing. It just appeared. It was so close to me that I could have reached out and touched it. Well, I knew. I just instantly knew. This was the loon Miles had chased. It was twice as big as it had looked from far away bigger than any duck. The tip of its beak was thin and as sharp as the point of a knife. Its black was the deepest black, its white, pure white, and it looked like it was wearing a necklace. It was hard to believe that no one had painted that exact pattern on its feathers. The loon looked at me with its red eye and did not move. Had it come up in this spot on purpose? Or was the loon as surprised as I was? We stared at each other for what felt like several minutes. Then, just as silently as it had arrived, the bird dove and was gone. After dinner that night, Mom and I sat on the dock to look for shooting stars. At our feet, Miles lay curled up, fast asleep. When the loons cried out in the dark, he was too tired to hear them. Mom and I listened. Those weird loon voices called to each other like sad laughter. Then one of the loons whisked through the moonlit air, close to the surface of the lake. It looked like a black bowling pin with a spear-shaped tip as it flew, out of the wild and back into the night. Loon Fun Facts A loon is a large water bird that looks something like a duck, but is not related to a duck at all. 
Loons belong to a family of ancient birds, at least 20 million years old. The best known species is the common loon, Gavia emmer. The common loon is the state bird of Minnesota. Loons spend almost all of their lives on water and come on land only to mate, build their nests, and incubate their eggs. Scientists think loons may, have, may live as long as 30 years. Who do you know who is about 30 years old? Does that seem old to you? Is that a long time for a bird? The common loon is famous for the black and white pattern of its summer feathers and its many eerie, unmistakable calls. Loons eat small fish, insects, snails, crayfish, frogs, and salamanders. Underwater, loons almost always use their feet to move, but not their wings. Loons' webbed feet, adapted for swimming, are set so far back on their bodies that it is difficult for them to walk on land. Loons are able to fly at speeds of 60 to 90 miles per hour. It says many cars on a highway drive about 60 miles per hour. If a loon flies at 60 miles per hour, how long does it take to fly five miles? Loons have been known to dive to depths of more than 100 feet. They usually dive for about a minute at a time to hunt for food. While most birds have hollow sponge-like bones making their skeletons light, loons have solid bones. To lift their heavy bodies into the air, loons need a long runway, sometimes several hundred yards of water surface. Male and female loons, adult loons, look alike, though the male is often a little bigger. Common loons weigh between 8 and 15 pounds and get larger in size as you go from west to east. Maine has larger loons compared to the west or midwest. They are 28 to 35 inches or 71 to 90 centimeters long with a wingspan of an adult being up to 58 inches or 147 centimeters wide. 